Hey, welcome back everybody. We are back in Mobile, Alabama today and it is uh, March the 11th, 2023 and I have a treat for you guys today. I'm standing right here in front of the Mobile Carnival Museum and uh, I saw it online so I thought I had to come and see it for myself and the building is way bigger than I thought it was going to be from what I saw on the internet. So I think I'm in for a treat with this one. So uh, let's go ahead and go inside and see what this place is all about. And uh, hope you like it. Let's go ahead and see what we can get into. Not only in New Orleans, but also in Mobile, do you see stuff like this. They're more alike than you would think. <laughs> Museum of the City of Mobile, the Chandler Foundation, 1929 to 1970. This is the main room. We're just getting started here. And these are all both real floats or were at one time. And the lady said there's actually a wedding going on in here later on today. And they didn't call me to rent out my photo booth. How dare they? And here's a fire truck with a jester looking whatever Mardi Gras guy here. Look how cute the puppies are. Some cool stuff. I found this place on uh, YouTube, on Google the other day and I told myself I had just had to uh, vlog it. The Strikers, 175th anniversary of the Strikers. I want to go take, you can put your head, you know, like, uh, you can go stand behind these things and put your head in it and take a picture and I want to do it. Look how neat. This is called the Carnival Museum in Biloxi. I guess since we can walk up into it, let's go ahead and do that. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? This reminds me of like a Twilight Zone episode where the whole town is like mannequinized and all of a sudden this one random dude in the middle of the whole town comes to life out of nowhere. Those are some nice paintings, man. Looks like they're all done by the same person. Mystic Striper Society. Here's the thing I want to put my head in and take a picture as a king or a queen. Big foil cat, tin foil cat. So yeah, we just discovered that this is made out of muffin tins, <laughs> as Jamie calls it, muffin tins. It is. It's, it's a bunch of muffin tins. It is a bunch of muffin tins. That's cute. Muffin tin cat. He means business too. All right, let's move on to the next part. Oh, look at this part. That's a headdress right there. Is that what you call those? Yeah. Headdresses? Here's the next room, or the first costume room. Some elegant stuff and some crowns. Mm -hmm. These things are decked out. This is called the Leader Costume Infant Mystics Michael Rogers 2022. I guess those are the crews and such. 
Look at these. Is that a train? Dang. It's like a rug. It's like a living room rug. Wow. But that'll keep you warm. Okay. Look at this. This is the 19... Oh, I did it again. That is an 1885. <laughs> an 1885 Order of Miss Mardi Gras. century off. Yeah. It's a progression of the Mardi Gras thing. Mardi Gras. Oh, this is neat. Erratic fantasies. <gasps> Only windmills? That means I guess they... Oh, yeah. Only it's a windmill wind theme. That's cool. It'd be a cool poster to have at home. There's some more up here. Infant, I keep seeing a lot of that infant mystic stuff. Well, look at this. Uh, look at this big mural, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Wow. Please watch your step. These cool little so you see the thing they picked Posters or festivals. printouts or whatever. Christmas, I mean Thanksgiving, Christmas, fishing where we go, wedding, it was a wedding somewhere. Weddings. And so the noose is on the back. These were drawn on the back of newspaper, the newspaper print on one side only. You see where the paper was folded and drawn in the yards at Southwest in New York, because these were over a million dollars. The only other place that owns these is the Library of Congress in Washington. And see that's silver fonts, or that's all. So this was all done by hand. I cannot that's why I'm really having a hard time. Well, look, did you know that 11 percent of our population works for one dollar in the line? Oh, one out of every ten. Oh, sure. There are seven world court designers that have a thousand meters and sanctions that work 12 months a year to make all this just for the world court families. This is so the parents. Look at these get ups, man. Wow. So you're born in this family, you just have money. Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. But if you lose your money, you're still one of the families and you're still included, but they wouldn't ask your son or daughter. These are all made right. by hand, uh, sewn by hand, uh, out of real animal fur. I think this one might be my favorite. Well, that, that is from a palace. That's from the ceiling of a palace in Italy. I, can't, yeah. I think that's a ghost seat the palace or something like that. I bet you these are heavy. Yeah. Up to 160 pounds. Oh, yeah. But these girls are And the crowns and scepters, you know, we make those in New Orleans too here by the Dynasty Collection. And they made that their name when the producers of the TV show Dynasty in the 1980s. That's this company here to make all the crowns and tear. And they make all the little miss stuff here. Right I remember That's Dynasty. I remember that TV show. This is our name. Look at these, man. It is so overwhelming. <laughs> is that mink or something? Yeah. Looks like it, huh? Chinchilla or mink. Hand sewn. There's a lot to see here. Look at this timeline. Dating back to 1703. All the way down to, well, this one stops at 2005. Check this out. 1942, 1945, the war cancels celebration of carnival. This place is pretty interesting. From the outside, it doesn't look like this place could hold all these rooms. Now they're saying these trains are, it takes nine months to make them and about nine people working around the clock full time to make them. They're made out of, they're made out of real uh, animal furs and they're recycled so when they make the, you know new ones for the next year, they take the fur off just to please PETA. If you see here, these are made out of little tails, real tails, and they dye the ends of them for but it's a design factor, but these are, they're super soft and they're real, real animal fur. And they're only hand sewn. They don't use machines on these, so that's why they take so long to make. This place is so cool, y'all. And some of these crews, the guy, the tour guide was telling us about this specific crew right here in this room. You have to be 
born into it. You can't just be invited into it. You have to be born into it. So some crews are like that, where it's just by blood, you know. And the coronation, or whenever they get crowned king and queens of the balls, they, when the kids are teenagers, I guess kind of like a Mardi Gras version of a quinceanera, they get crowned in their teens. So these are made for basically teenagers to wear for an hour. Nine months of work for an hour. And five bucks for the first person who can tell me what that number is. <laughs> Look at this get up. Oh, what's the date on that? 2021. There's some kids. Some of these things are just plain spooky. Joe Kane's Merry Widows, 1974. I guess that's a different, its own crew also. Mardi Gras crew, crewing has always been a very strange thing. These things look like they could be real almost. But I assure you they're not. Look at this cat person. That's the true definition of a cat person. <laughs> That's cool. Elephant head. I guess somebody would wear that. That's pretty sweet. Let's go look in here. Every room is like its own theme, its own thing. It's like a real person sitting over there. It's kind of creepy looking, huh? I he just jumped out at you. <laughs> Look at this cool saddle. Of metal on there. I guess it's time to go upstairs. There's three stories to this place. Three stories. And we're on just the first, I believe. So let's go upstairs. Oh, cool. And here's Jamie in the band room. Please do not touch Bob Schultz's Dixieland Band. Excelsior Band, 1883. Look at that, it's a tin hat. It looks like it. Some sheet music. Some maracas. And, uh... I know what sound that thing makes. I don't know what to call it. I'm not gonna try to make the sound with my mouth either, because then I'm. Hey, look, it's a sweet thing. The guide just now was saying that the Mardi Gras colors, purple, gold, and green, come from uh, the fact that uh, the first two colors, purple and gold, were from LSU, Louisiana State University, which is purple and gold, and then the people of Mobile were hard set against being only purple and gold because of LSU, so they added in the color green because of Tulane University, 
and uh, they were okay with that. So that's where the purple, gold, and green came from, which I never knew in my whole life. Imagine coming down this hallway when it's the middle of the night. This gauntlet of, look at this cool stuff. Just waiting for one of them to jump out at me. Now you saw this room earlier. While the guide was talking, I didn't do much talking in there, but we went through that room already down there. And I was showing you guys, I was glancing up to actually where I'm standing now. And he was telling us about this goat here. This is the oldest Mardi Gras mascot in the Western Hemisphere. And this goat, which is carved out of wood, is worth about 25 to $30 million. And it was carved out in 1870. 1870. That's worth 25 to 30 million dollars. And it's the representation of so much, which is why it's worth so much. And this table right here is worth about five and a half million dollars. It was carved out. There's different things on it. You can see the carvings, but there's a physician carved out on there and like the pharmacy thing right there. You can see that. And a, there's a medicine barrel or some kind of barrel, right? Barrel. And there's some scissors and stuff right there. And they said it was designed by the people who designed it didn't know what an alligator looked like. So when they were in Australia or referencing Australia, they thought that platypuses would look just like alligators. So that's why they carved platypuses into the legs right there in the stand. Which is silly because the platypus looks nothing like an alligator. This is all what the uh, tour guide told us. So it's about 30 to 35 million dollars worth of things in this one glass case right here. Which is roughly what I make in a year. <laughs> Got crazy. There's Father Time right there. Or Jesus Christ, if you reference uh, Michael Scott in the office. What does Egyptian one look? Man, don't they look almost real? On camera, they look really real. They look more real on camera than they do in, in person. I like his Jesus sandals. It's some Roman, Roman okay. sandals. What about the cow bladders? Yeah, let's go stick the cow. Okay, so these. Look at this. Get up. You can only hope and pray like when you have to wear stuff like this that it's nice and cool outside. Everybody say goodbye to the 25 to 30 million dollar goat. He says goodbye back. Now these things down here, these whatever, Rocky Mountain oyster looking things, these are actually cow bladders. And if you look on Dirty Jobs online or the TV show or something, they actually showcase how they make these. You could probably Google it or YouTube it, I mean, which I didn't have a chance to do yet, but uh, I'm definitely interested in doing that. But they're made out of real cow bladders. Knights of Revelry, 1874. There's a picture. Hey, where's that picture with all the cow bladders on that thing? I'll show you an example of... Oh, here we go. This picture right here. This is a real picture of a float, as you can see, and those are all, those are all real cow bladders. So like 30 or 40 of them or whatever, 50 of them. So at least they put all, all the parts of the cow to good use. <laughs> this one looks like it's made out of chinchilla or mink again. Man, these things are pretty fantastic, aren't they? And they said every, every, you know, gem and stone on these things are real. They're not like plastic uh, costume jewelry. I don't know if you guys are catching any of the bling from them, but. You can see a better view now. Those are all real 
gemstones and all that. They're very expensive. The guy jokingly said that each of these costs about the price of a small Lexus SUV or a Lexus SUV. You can estimate how much that would be for each one. That's worn once a year for an hour. It's so cool. There's some footage. Here's some more. A nice uh, drinkware right there. David Co David Jones Cooper Senior, 1971. Looks like a 1971 picture. Looks like he'd be in a high school band, also, doesn't it? That's a nice blue color. I mean, I'm not much of a, yeah, that's a lot going on in that one. Like a North Carolina, <laughs> there's a sports fan in me. I call that a North Carolina blue. Look at this big one. This one's like eight, nine feet across, probably maybe 10 feet across. What'd you say? Nothing, but those are mink tails. Did you tell me that? Mink tail. Okay, so the tails I showed you guys on that one are mink tails. These are cool. What? These are mink tails. Mink tails. Real mink tails. And they only use the fur because they look like pita. Right, I already told them that about the pita stuff. And a deer one. Like Bambi. Here's some more Mardi Gras footage. Probably a, probably a VHS, I'm sure. That's like a Pepto Bismol pink right there. They're all really pretty, though. You know, you can tell a lot of a lot of heart and detail go into those. Anything that. Any piece of clothing that takes nine people nine months to make. And if you guys come and visit this place for yourself, there's actually like you know DVD videos you can watch that explain a lot of details about each room. And there's also, like I said, there's a audio tracks you can tune into and. Like each room will have a certain number and you hit that number and it'll be an audio about that room. Like the band room, when I walked in the band room, there was uh, Jamie was listening to the audio for that, the history on that room. Which would be way too long of a vlog if I included all that stuff in the, each room and did all the reading, like I usually do. I just try to show you guys the, the cool stuff and the visuals and a little bit of history that the tour guides give us. I uh, try to convey to you guys without boring you or making way too long of a vlog. This looks like wedding dress stuff right here. What'd you say? This one's called 50 Tony Fairlight. I guess it's like a bunch of clowns. Oh, maybe. The jesters, yeah. 50 funny, oh, 50 funny fellows, yeah. You see, look, he's eating a hot dog. And he spilled mustard on it up there. And then his kid, his kid wanted to play tic-tac-toe and draw a lollipop on his costume design, but he was like, we're just going to go with that. <laughs> I hope you guys just got all that. That's Jamie's interpretation of this uh, beautiful piece of art right here. Everything from a hot dog to a coffee stain to a tic-tac-toe. Check out this uh, gift shop, guys. This place, it's been so loud in there with music and people talking, guys. I'm so sorry. I hope you got all the information I was trying to tell you, but uh, most of it's just visual anyway. If all you get out of it is uh, cool visuals of all this cool Mardi Gras stuff and Mardi Gras history here in Mobile, that's really the most important part. But um, this place is awesome, guys. I mean, if you look it up online, when I looked it up online, 
it looked like it was in a much smaller place and that it was way less that there was way less to see and then when you come and see it in person I mean you've seen it this place is immense it's it's huge there's lots to see and uh, I loved it highly recommend it highly recommend it I give this a uh, 10 out of 10 for sure very nice And here's the admission. That's the and I call him the alien. Very, very affordable. I got a military discount today, so for uh, Jamie and I, we can't, we only paid twelve dollars to get in together. Twelve dollars to get in each. No, twelve, not twelve each. Twelve together. Well, all right, guys. Uh, all I got to say about this one is super wow. Uh, it was way more than I thought I was going to get. It was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And, man, that place was full of all kinds of cool stuff. And I highly recommend it if you're ever in Mobile. It's right here, downtown Mobile. And it's cheap. Uh, like I showed you guys, the admission prices uh, with myself and my friend Jamie, we both got in for 12 bucks because I was in the military, so I got a discount. And so the two of us together was like $12 to get in. It's three stories, including like a big like a ballroom looking thing where I showed you the floats and all that man it's it's worth it totally worth it if you're in the area I highly recommend it and so with that I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and uh, don't forget to like subscribe all that stuff hit the notification bell so you get more of these uh, when you get notifications when I post more of these videos so with that I'll bid you adieu I'm gonna finish drinking my coke here and uh, signing off I love you guys and you have a wonderful day see you soon